Welcome, everybody, to Who's Your Band? I'm Jeffrey Paul. I am joined by my co-host, Sean Morton. How are you, Sean? Jeffrey, today's podcast is sponsored by Puff LA. It is the greatest weed cartridges you can find on the market right now. All right, already we know what kind of show this is going to be. Oh, uh, it's spiraling downhill real quick. Yeah, it's 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 going to go downhill real quick once we introduce our guests. Wait till we got a surprise for people today. This, One of my this, favorites. Yeah, th- he, that's why he's on the show. But he is being brought on by request by listeners. Uh, we're not introducing you yet. Calm down, okay? There's a couple of things we have to talk about before we bring you in. All right, I okay, but um. What I wanted to talk about was I recently went to, um, and this was the inspiration for the, today's show, is I went to go see the Beach Boys um, at the last day in May. And it just started to make me think, you know, once you start hearing those songs, regardless that Mike Love is 83 years old and that uh, uh, Bruce Johnson is 81 and John Stamos is running around looking like he's 28, but he's actually going to be 61 next month. These songs are still so iconic. And when you start to hear them, you really start to think of summer. So I was like, no, it'd be a good uh, show for us if we did just, no, we don't have to list them. What are songs that make you think of summer? What are some of the great summer songs? So when you think of summer, you think of sunshine, you think of California, and then you think... Okay, who's going to have an opinion that's going to piss me off the second he picks his first one? And who do the people <laughs> love? And we bring in an old friend, and I miss this guy, but I, I really do. You know, he's on the coast. We welcome back to the show, Anthony Kaffer. Hello. Thanks for having me back. Oh, uh, it's a pleasure. What, what have you been up to, man? I haven't uh, spoke to you like in a minute. It's been a while. Um, I've I've been um, I started like a garage rock band with a, a a buddy of mine, so I've been working on that. Is it a two? Thing and is it like a two piece like a local H? Kind of. Uh, unfortunately, the other guy. I mean, he's a great musician, but he plays bass and backup vocals. Uh, so I still have to do my my foot drumming. That you've seen me do ah. before it would have been great if he could play drums and then we would do the the, the local h sort of thing but uh you know we tried looking for drummers but drummers are just the worst in so california it's, yeah it's the same as new york like any general, any drummer, drummer that is is worth anybody's time wants to be paid and uh you know this stuff i'm doing doesn't we're not, you know, we're not, we're not that big, so I don't have money to. I went to see my uh, my little cousin's uh, rock, a school of rock band. Uh, oh yeah, two weeks ago, and you know, the kid's good, you know, but they alternate uh, students out, and they had this one kid who was probably like fourteen, and he was clearly autistic, and you know, just very socially awkward, but he was very, very pleasant, smiling, happy, and then he gets up and does uh, "No One Knows" by Queens of the Stone Age. Wow. You would have sworn fucking Dave Grohl was playing drums because this kid lit up like a Christmas tree, twirling, twirling drumsticks like Tommy Lee while he's playing. And he was just, he was, get get anything his number. Yeah, right. Yeah. Drummers are the worst, though. We're actually talking about my old drummer. And we had a, we stole my drummer, but we, uh, we had a gig one time. Uh, He was one of those people who just could not hold liquor in the least bit. And mm. it was in the period of time when Goldschlager was very, very popular. I back, remember this time. Yeah. Back in the late 90s when you get so drunk, you would try and like fish out the gold flakes and see if you can actually sell them. And, <laughs> uh, he had like two Coors Lights in him and a shot of Goldschlager, and that was it. And I can vividly remember being on stage at uh, Connections in Clifton, New Jersey, and maybe five or six seconds into the first song, I hear this loud crash and his stick goes right through his snare drum. And as I hear it, I turn my head and the asshole takes the snare drum and throws it into the crowd and missed my head by about, I don't know, maybe three inches. And nobody would give him a snare drum for the rest of the show. (laughs) He had to play on a tom for the rest of the show because they they knew how dangerous he was as a player. Like a (laughs) jerk playing on a a tom. And that that Connections is a big gay club now. 
No, I'm just making that up. Um, due to the cost of touring, okay, like I went to go see uh, Mike Tramp. He used to be the lead singer in White Lion. Remember him? Oh, okay. I what. And they're playing. They're playing as a two piece. It's he's playing acoustic guitar. His uh, his uh, guitar player is you know playing electric. And he plays great, but everything else is on a loop. The drums are programmed. And oh, he, they do it like that. Yeah, and he addresses it. Uh -huh. You know, he, he's like, you know, I, I, you know, the vocals and everything that you see in here is live, but because and he says it because of the cost of what it takes to talk, because he he lives in Scandinavia still. Okay? Really? Oh, yeah. So wow. so when he, so when he comes over here, it you know it co it costs a lot of money, and uh, it's like you know he just this easier to split it with two people than than a four piece. So yeah. you know he'll do the singing. You know he'll play like maybe a little even a bass. Uh, a guitar a little bit he has his his guitar player who's great but all drums and you know any type of uh, keyboard or accompaniment is all on uh on a recording oh, tracks i thought about doing tracks was it what did it seem cool or was it a little bit lame you know when he as long as i think you address it you know like aerosmith does this you know they'll they play and they'll tell you hey we have a guy back here we just want to and they'll let you know they're playing i think as long as you're up front with with the fans and don't try and put one over i think people yeah. are cool with it you know once, once he addressed it i think nobody cared you're still hearing his voice you're still hearing great yeah. guitar leads you know yeah. I, I think it, i think it's fine i think it depends on the act too i think if you're playing on a smaller club like i'm sure he wasn't playing a monstrous club like he was playing he was playing the debonair uh ballroom oh, that's tiny so that's that's fine there but i remember seeing shine down a long time ago and that was right right when they were blowing up with the sound of madness album it was right after that and you know the singer's running around and you know has the microphone down by his hip but uh you can still hear him singing yeah yeah yeah, it, it's a little weird when it's a bigger, bigger venue, you know, fifteen thousand people, and you and you know it's a four piece band, but you can hear like seven different instruments playing. And they're, not, <laughs> they're not addressing it. I think that's a little different, but I think a smaller club with a with a smaller uh, star caliber, I think. Uh, yeah, or, or when do du Lupa uh, drops the mic and the voice is still going, then she kicks the mic and it's still uh, going perfectly. Remember that? I think I saw SNL? that. One. The okay. SNL with uh, Ashley Simpson when she was blowing Ooh. up. Yeah. Yeah. And it it, it got caught up. And goofy and shit like that. Just trying like, oh, I was yeah. horrible. Absolutely. Yeah. And the band kept playing. Yeah. yeah. And it, it ruined her career. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, that was the last yeah. thing she ever I mean, did. the shitty music didn't help either, but, you know. Well, that, speaking that, of shitty music, didn't that also happen to Mariah Carey on, like, a New Year's show? You watch your fucking whore mouth, <laughs> okay? You watch your whore mouth right now. Because you're just, talking about my angel right there. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, I, you know, I'm just saying what I saw. Um, but anyway, take show. We are talking about great summer songs, and and what do, what do you listen to in the summer? Like, is there any songs that bring you to the summer that make you think summertime? Uh, there are songs that make me think summertime. I it's funny because I wasn't thinking about like putting a playlist together or something to to ring in the summer i i used to do it when i was a kid like for summer vacation for school and stuff like that it, fe it felt mo more like a thing mm -hmm. but now yeah. summer is just like especially in california summer is just like another day that's <laughs> yeah see that's I, I guess that's a good point because when you live on the east coast you know it's yeah. like now that we're experiencing the weather we have now as opposed to like say even a month ago you're yeah. real i'm really starting to feel summer yeah, you know, I'm really yeah, starting yeah. to like get, get ready. It's like you know, my pool is open. It's real. It's really all starting Ooh. to come together. Um, so like a song like for me, like when I hear this song, it brings me to summertime. And the first song I'm going to mention is remember the song Heat Wave, originally written in 1963. Multiple acts did it. Martha and the Vandellas had a huge hit with it. Phil Collins uh, charted with it. But the version that I always go back to is Linda Ronstadt. Her mm -hmm. voice is so powerful. Like during those, like yeah, yeahs, the guitar solo by Andrew Gold. I mean, it's like I hear this song. I if I'm even if they play it in the dead of winter, it makes me think of summertime. Yeah, I can hear something like that. I also think like uh, kind of what, what Anthony was saying too. Uh, you don't really. I, I don't hear anything new that reminds me of summer. And I think a lot of the songs that 
I have in my mind are stuff that I heard growing up when I think yeah. that distinction of summer, meaning like school being out and then you're, you're home for the summer and things like that. I think it's, yeah. I, that's where I tend to, to go towards. And I, I, I don't even go more towards rock and metal, which is more my wheelhouse. I tend to go 95% pop when I hear something, when I think of summer too. Like what? Like, uh, I, one of my favorites it's one of my favorite songs of of all time is and we danced by the hooters oh that's a good song yeah but when you yeah. hear that like you hear that the keyboards you're thinking about walking on the yeah. walk uh it's a very upbeat you know i, I just always think of summer when i hear rob that hyman eric brazilian they did a lot of the uh writing for cindy lapa yeah they did they broke they played the whole uh she's so unusual album yeah, they're, they're, they're great. They're great songwriters. Although it's very funny how songs take you to a place. And I I love that song. But that song does not make me think of summer. It makes me think more of winter. Really? Why is that? Yeah. I, I think when it was released, I remember I was at the label uh, when that came out. And I remember they opened for Cyndi Lauper on a, on a tour. And I remember seeing it in December. Okay. But I, but I mean, but the music is very very lighthearted, and that's and I and I think of Seaside when I hear that song. I remember vividly going down to Seaside with a friend and some broads, and some what? Broad. Some dames. Uh, 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 all right, Paulie dames? Wall. Yeah, hey, yo, these, you know, we were with these dames over there, and we walking down. So I like, you know, anyone kind of fucks with us, you know, they're getting a sausage up their wazoo. Yeah, it's kicking in. Just so you know. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's, that's definitely. <laughs> That is definitely one for me. Let's hear your first one, Anthony. I want to. I want to see which direction this podcast is going because if it's a good one, <laughs> well, I got. You, I, I got. Had pleasant trees. Here all, we go. All across the spectrum. Uh, Speaking but, of spectrum, Anthony Kaffer is here. <laughs> when when I was a kid, I used to on the last day of school when I would get home, I would put on Alice Cooper. School's out. Right. Uh, that that is the ultimate. Yeah, the that's ultimate. a great one. Yeah, it's a good and it's one of the few cool rock songs that is also a summer song. So because you were talking about just it feels like pop songs just do it better. You can't I, really I have like a a rock and song that's like but yeah. You, you grew up in New York, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you so you would you I I I have the same exact memory. Like you'd be last day of high, high school. I remember I remember I'm being on Luton Avenue. I went to Tottenville High School and Alice Cooper's schools out would be playing like on PLJ. Remember oh, that? Yeah. 955. That's yep. where it first came out when you were getting out of high school too. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Um Yeah, that, but that that see all right. Anti first choice, not yeah. bad. He, I know. He, it means I have to slow down now. You shit. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, I got plenty. I got plenty of ones that you're gonna hate. But you, you <laughs> but you were talking about uh, trying to find. I kind of alluding to it. Trying, trying to find something new, and a lot of songs. You're right. All older songs, but I was trying to find something new that that I didn't want to like it to be forced. And so I, one of the newer ones, and it's not that new, was uh, Island in the Sun by Weezer. You know, yeah, it, that's it a great has song. A very, it has one. a very, yeah, it has a very easy, very like, like kind of like a, a summer, like, like, you know, strum to it. And the funny thing about that song was that song is off the second Weezer. It's known as the Green Album. Mm -hmm. And it was going to be third. left off. Third album. Third, third, album. The third right. It was right. Pinkerton was the second. Um, that was going to be left off, and wow. and uh, yeah, Rico Kasich from the Cause, who was producing the album, said like, you know, he fought for it. He convinced uh, Rivers Cuomo, hey, you guys got to put this one on. And you know, I remember it had two two different videos, but that, yes. that to me is always like a fun like some like that. That's that kind of song you're gonna listen to when you're shoveling snow. You're gonna listen yeah. to yes. you listen to that in your backyard. You know, when you're in your pool. Did you and that song that song came out when I was in high school. Ah. As opposed to Alice Cooper when you were in high school. That's right. Well, it, well, the thing is, it was already out. It was out for a number of years, but it was just like there were certain songs that were all <laughs> uh, that were all re always kind of like yeah, played. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like Old Land Zion has always played. You know the you know, the the, the uh, Fogelberg song, Dan Fogelberg. It always did played. he write that? Old Lang Zion, the the New Year's Eve song, and, uh, say, uh, another Land Zion. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, it's a it's a beautiful song. 
Uh, but Alice Cooper was played every school year. You, I, yeah. I remember from freshman year through uh, senior year, last day of school, the radio stations played this like on a loop. Hmm. See, I, I had a struggle because like I'm looking at my list that I'm making. I'm like, oh, God, this one says the word sun. This one says the word sunshine. This one says the word summer in it. So it was like a, I, I was trying to break it up a little bit. And when you said this is kind of a newer song and I'm, I'm going to say a band that you don't like, which I will I will get you converted to this band. Uh, I go with the song 45 by the Gaslight Anthem. And I, you're not a fan. I know you're not a fuck with this band. All right. Have you ever heard them? Number one. Uh, it's, it, here and there. Okay, so it's if you like you like Springsteen, <laughs> right? Mean, I love Springsteen. Okay, so a, a, so is Anthony. Anthony, and I we're gonna go. Nah, to Springsteen. not for me. Yeah, we were gonna go Spring- see Springsteen together, but then he uh, wouldn't answer my calls. Springsteen <laughs> literally has handed the torch to Brian Fallon from the Gaslight Anthem as the the Jersey band at this point, and I, wow. I fully agree with them with that. And they they just carry on the sound. But Forty Five is just one of those songs where. An animal, if he wants to chime in, will agree with this. It's uh, they have a lot of brooding, you know, kind of like I'm depressed bullshit songs. You cannot get uh, in a bad mood when you hear this song, and it's really all about just like. I take that as a challenge. Uh, <laughs> if no, it, it sounds it, like it, Springsteen, it'll put me. No, in a bad no, mood. it doesn't sound like Springsteen at all. This song, I, I will say that, but it's one of those really just happy, upbeat. Uh, it's a driving song for sure, like one of those ones you can crank. I love good driving song. It is a good, good driving song. You open the windows, the sunroof, maybe the top down. You blast this song down the parkway, heading down to the pony. Nothing. Where, where, where are you going? To the pony? To the pony. Yeah, Stone, Stone pony. pony? Stone yeah. pony. Mm-hmm. Anthony, what's your favorite Springsteen song? The one that is short. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, actually. What, uh... Is it the river? Yeah. Springsteen. Does he do... What's the one about... Um... Something about fire. What's the yeah? I'm on fire. fire. On fire. Yeah, that one's okay. Yeah, it's, it's also creepy as fuck. It is really it creepy? Is. I don't remember the lyrics. Hey, hey little girl, is your daddy home? Does, oh, does, man. does he know he's leaving you all alone? I got <laughs> a burning one... desire. Oh yeah, yeah that Paul, is. I didn't Paul remember. Bond remember the... famously does that in his act. And actually, Gaslight Anthem, one of their songs, uh, "Meet Me by the River's Edge," they actually go. And at night, I wake up with the sheets soaking wet. It's a pretty good song, baby. You know the rest. Yeah, yeah, it's, homage that's that's like an homage. It's an homage. It's an he homage. writes one decent song, and it has to be problematic. <laughs> Oof. It's, it, right. it, 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 let me tell you, it's one of those pedophiles. The oh, pedo song. Jerry here. All right. Speaking of pedophile songs, there's. I, I'm a huge metal fan, right? So Motorhead is one of the classic hard rock metal bands of all time. So they have an album called Bastards, and Bastards is a great, great, great record. Pure rock and roll, right? has uh, Born to Raise Hell, which I think is one of the the coolest friggin' rock songs ever written. But on this album is a song called Don't Let Daddy Kiss Me. And it's this like weird song about like this girl talking to somebody saying, my dad molests me, just please keep him away from me. And it's like this slow, broody acoustic. It is one of the most disturbing things you'll ever listen to in your life. I I've never heard that. Never one. heard it. Uh, it's it's crazy. It's like yo, uh, my daddy has big boils on his face, and he had <laughs> plays the bass, and he's gonna try <laughs> and kiss me. You don't know that song? Well, now that you sing it, it actually does sound kind of familiar. It, 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 I am I, nowhere near high enough to hear that again. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give us a summer song. Who me? You yes. Oh, Anthony. let's see. Okay, let me see. All right. Uh, you know what? This is probably going to be the worst, the worst one. Uh, but God damn it, this also, I might have been in high school when this came out, and it reminds me of summer. I'm going, Len, steal my sunshine. I oh, knew bitch, I, that was my next pick. I knew I, somebody was going to pick that. The su- it, we're talking know. about creepy. I mean, it's a brother sister thing, and then the video, they look like they're in love, and the song is just, it's the slow motion on the back of the bike yeah, on, the, on the Kawasaki Ninja. It's really weird. The, I mean, it's one of the worst songs ever, but oh, I love clearly. it. But it, it's, it's one of those terrible songs you song. not admit that you like. I mean, it, it's a no. I, I'll admit I don't like it, and I honestly don't like it. Not even as a bit. I hate it. That was actually my next pick too. You prick! Wow, it, it, that song gets me angry. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I can see that. Yeah, it, 
it, I think it tries hard to be a, a summer song, but I but I can understand why someone would pick it. So it's so far, so yeah, I'm waiting for you to pick this one particular artist, and that and that's going to be the one that's going to set us off. Um, <laughs> but, but so far, Anthony, you're doing I great. I, pick, um, <laughs> I hope I pick this artist. Um, I'm going to go with this. You guys know uh, "Cruel Summer" by Banana Rama, right? Yeah, absolutely. yeah, kind of like so. kind of like a darker uh, summer vibe. But you know what? It was, if you remember, it was in the Karate Kid during like a great beach scene. Yep, absolutely. And you remember this? You remember this? Uh, on, on the Cobra Kai remake, they did a remake of Cruel Summer too. Uh, it's not Banana Ram, it's somebody else who does it. And they do it very dark, almost like a, like a Bauhaus kind of like 80s alternative vibe. Kind of like, yeah, Marilyn Manson doing Sweet Dreams. Yeah, yeah a little yeah. Oh, like yeah. that. It's a cool, it's a cool version. But the thing, but the thing with the with the um, the Karate Kid version, you know, with the you know uh, that scene, is like think about it. Daniel Larusa got his ass kicked in front of a girl he's trying to pick up. Okay, like he starts with Johnny Lawrence, right? Johnny Lawrence beats him up, and she still sticks with him. Yeah, you- and 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 also he was poor. Yeah, but if you <laughs> Johnny Lawrence, Johnny Lawrence had had money. In it what really world does YouTube, that happen? Go on YouTube and there's a whole like documentary theory about how LaRusso is actually the bad guy. Yeah, yeah I know. And it, and it carries into Cobra Kai. But he, he was. You know, think about it. You know, things could have been left alone. But what does he have to do? You know, when the Cobra Kai addressed a skeleton, he has to take the uh, the hose and, and memory gets them all wet. He yeah. turns the hose. You know, it's coming around and he's running around. Like, yeah, Daniel was a, was a jerk, but... And, and all those cars, he picked that stupid, ugly yellow one, too? Yeah, he had to pick that old one. He was a little pompous, you know? But that that song still makes me think of Summer. Like, again, a song that's not a song you're going to see, like, during football season, or here during football season. It's not going to be a song that you play during the, in the snow. That is definitely like a Summer song. See, I, I'm going to go with one that is definitely reminds me of Summer, but I think... It kind of uh, has the vibe where you can play it all year round because it's more of like a, a happy song instead of just it's "Walking on Sunshine" by Katrina and the Waves. It's a good song. I think it's a really fun. It's a fun, typical '80s song. I mean, if you go into the dictionary and look up what's like the definition of a cheesy '80s song, that's it's, definitely it's right it's, up there. it's fun. It was sung by a four. You know, yeah. Oh my God! Have you looked in a mirror lately? <laughs> You just called somebody a four. Yeah, I called her a four. <laughs> what but wait, does that make it not a good song? I, I, it's okay. I, I, it's nothing. Jeffrey, you know, I just see Jeffrey in a whole new light now. I actually like him tonight. This is great. Pompous ass <laughs> Jeffrey is a really wow. big change of pace. I, I don't know. That's how you judge summer songs. That's <laughs> how it. Yes, Anthony. That's how I judge him. I want. I want to say you know, if if. If a, if eighties version Pam Anderson is singing something, it's a automatically a great song. If she's singing, if she's song singing, of the summer. right? If she's singing it in a bathing suit, it's in my top ten. Yeah, Fabio was my. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to see Katrina sitting there wearing a, a one piece jumpsuit. She was it almost looked like she was wearing a hazmat suit in that video. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. I love it. <laughs> what about the Baywatch theme song? You ever just put that on a playlist? No, never, you know I never watched Bay Baywatch. Oh, never did okay. never either. Oh, okay. It was always on at the wrong time. I learned how yeah, to do like CPR from four, Baywatch. Four, I mean, I'm assuming four. I know how to do CPR uh, well, based yeah. on you don't know how to do this, CPR. This, this is the difference, Jeffrey. Though, because like we were actually out in the world experiencing life when Baywatch was kind of popular, and Anthony's a little bit younger than us. You know what I mean? So to him, not that much younger. Yeah, yeah. Four, I was four, in like junior I mean, high. <laughs> I was in yeah, yeah, he, he's so young. He's, he's so he's such an innocent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, ahead, Anthony, pick a song. Uh, okay, um, it's it's also a, an all year round song, I think. But uh, specifically, summertime, especially if I'm heading to the beach, Rockaway Beach. Oh, great! Uh, song. The Ramones. Yeah, great that, pick. That, that's a great. I think I think the the Ramones. I don't know for some reason. You know they're gritty. They're New York City, but they do have a summertime vibe to them, don't you think? Yeah, the Beach yeah. Boys kind of influence that they have. Very funny that you mentioned that. So I go see the Beach Boys, right? They mm-hmm. do. They did a couple of covers. One cover they did was Rockaway Beach. Did they really? 
They do Rockaway Beach, and they have this how, drummer how do they do, that has to be maybe in his 30s that is basically standing up the whole time, plays like a oh. madman, okay, sings great. The, the backing band that they have are like, you know, they're great. You know, they're, they're definitely like, you know, A musicians. But yeah. if you're gonna, but if you're gonna, you know, bring it mention like that, you know, the Beach Boys, I think, Good Vibrations, uh, you know, you can pick oh, a lot yeah. of songs. Yeah, you yeah, can Good pick Vibrations. Anything. The only vibrations they're getting now from their fucking pacemakers. Jesus, <laughs> uh, why don't laugh at that? Uh, okay, uh, but yeah, off of Pet Sounds and you know, that, sounds, that's yeah. but that song in particular is a mix of like a lot of different instruments. You have there's uh, a theremin on there. Yeah, you, yeah, you have like. Um, cellos you have um injury um, dues the, 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 there's a hop there's a hop on it you know at the, at the beginning there's synthesizers and this is brian wilson's masterpiece this album but the lyrics are contributed by mike love you know mm. and it just it just is kind of like a fun song of course like you know the musicianship is the uh, wrecking crew you know it, so oh it's, yeah you know, see so the documentary that, about them of course i did that was that was amazing um but you know they just played on everything but that song in particular, I mean, there are other songs off of Pet Sounds, but that song in particular makes you think of summertime. You know, you're, you're in your backyard, you're having like people over, you, again, you're, you're barbecuing. You put on like a Beach Boys Greatest Hits and that song comes on. That is ultimate summer to me. Yeah, that's a pretty can't good argue You can't argue that. with that one. No, I really, I mean, I could try, but I'm not going to. <laughs> well, it's no Gaslight Anthem, but go ahead. No, <laughs> no, I'm going to go, I'm going to go in the era too. I'm going to go with 70, this one. And for me, this is another one that I always, I always associate with Summer, the original or cover versions of it. I go Drift Away with by Dobie Gray. Oh, that's a, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Kind of a weird, a, out of left field one, but I think it's just one of those ones where you can just sit yourself in the backyard. You have a, a cold beverage, maybe a smoke or a cigar or a weed pen by Puff LA, the best cartridges on the planet. I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. Anyway, but that's yet. What song. Yet. Yet. Uh, I, have a, I have a bad association with that song, though. Why? Because when I was like maybe 10 years old, I went to a sleepaway camp. And I was supposed to be like in a bunk with my cousin. And my cousin was like the king of this camp. Every, you know, he was popular. Everyone liked him. But there wasn't enough room in his bunk. So they put me in a bunk with older kids. And I was kind of getting picked on a little bit. So what I would do, you know, not Great. to get picked. He raped, by the way. He doesn't be picked up. <laughs> no. So what I would do was, because I was small. And so I would come up with like funny things to do, like contests, uh, you know, like jumping off the, the the bunk and and like grading it, leading like the raids down to like the, where the girls were. Like oh. I, I I would be like that guy just so the attention wasn't on me, so I wouldn't get picked on. God, and, let me tell you, I I know I know how annoying you are as an adult. <laughs> I can't even imagine how annoying you were as like from like twelve to thirteen. Oh, I would have been that dude who just relentlessly beat the shit out of you constantly. Oh. See, it was they weren't no one was like physical with me, but they they, they were too because I was I was small, you know. Like I had to t take the, the shitty bunk. I was up on the top, you know. Uh, I was left out of stuff, but one but once I was kept coming up with ideas, you know, near the end of like my stay because it was a two week camp. So by by the second week, you know, it was starting to get better. You're like that little the young kid on Revenge of the Nerds. No, I knew I was like I was like the kid from Meatballs. Did you ever see that movie? Love Bill Murray. Movie. Such a great movie. That's a yeah. good one. Yeah, I was I was Classic Rudy the Bill Rabbit. Murray. Rudy the Rabbit. Pick another song, Ant. Uh, all right. This one surprises even me, because I don't I I don't like anything really associated with. Uh... All right. This is a, I'm picking a cover. It's uh, Boys of Summer, the cover done by the Ataris. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't like the Ataris. I think I it's a either. great cover. I don't like their I don't like their version. And the reason no? I, I, Oh, I like it. I'll tell you why, and I have I have specific reasons for it. There was a band out called Code Seven. Now I want you to download this, Anthony. Uh, they okay. actually had the first cover of Boys. When of you Summer. come on this show, Anthony, you get homework. Yeah, you get homework. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Now you download this. Good. You yeah, listen to it. You, you write a 400 word <laughs> review on this, and then you submit it to Sean. I'm sure his job at Apple in the fucking Valley, where he works 16 hours a day, is really fucking time consuming. 
<laughs> anyway, Me? yeah, there was a band called Code Seven, and they did like I think it was the Warp Tour, one of those tours with the Ataris, and they had a brutal cover of Code of a uh, Boys of Summer, and Ataris were the direct opening band for them. This is before they really really blew up, and then like a year and a half later, they have a cover of Boys of Summer. Ooh, little I didn't down, know. Little toned oh, wow. down compared to the Code Code Sevens was heavy. It was very heavy, but uh, okay. So it was uh that's why I have a little bit of beef with that song. Well, I, I didn't know that. I, and I like the original just fine. I oh, just yeah, definitely. Do you know, do you know just, who wrote uh, it? It's Don Henley? No, he it really wasn't supposed to be a Don Henley song. It be it was originally intended for another one of your favorite artists, Anthony. It was supposed to be a Tom Petty and the Heartbreaker song and it was Ooh. written by Mike Campbell who was the guitar player. And Tom Petty okay. was re recording Southern accents at the time. And he just felt this song isn't that right. Doesn't fit. That doesn't yeah. fit. The yeah, album. That's what he said. He said it doesn't fit on the album. And so he gave uh, mm -hmm. Henley the song. Uh, Henley um, uh, added some lyrics. I But I like about the lyrics, what like the details. You know, like it tells a story. It really does feel like an end of summer song to me. You know, but like, you know, the deadhead uh, sticker on a Cadillac and then the Atari's, uh, what's the Black Flag uh, sticker Black on Flag, a Cadillac? Yeah, yeah, great, yeah I, I love nice both. I, I love both versions. I think, you know, the, especially the Atari's version, it stays true to the original, but they do put a, you know, that, that twist on it. I think they're both really good. I'm going to do something I haven't done on this podcast. I'm impressed yet. by anything so far. I really am. I, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I was all excited. I was ready to bash somebody else except you on this on this show. But <laughs> I can't do it this time. And he's pissing me off a little bit, Jeff. I'm not going to lie. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just put, the, I'm going to put my phone to the microphone so you can hear the intro to the Code 7 version. and see. Oh, what yeah. Okay. This is the ideal way to listen to music. <laughs> you want to hear it through... Uh, we can't hear anything. I don't hear. It's being canceled out yeah. through Zoom. I think you got to turn on. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, Adam, whatever. is there any way you can what find this song? It's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And we, word, can, we, we can play. We can play a snippet of it. No one's gonna get all upset if we play Code Seven. I like. That. You know, I think I think YouTube could be a little tolerant with, yeah, with I think, that. I think they'll be fine. I don't think they're even released. I think it's a like a uh, independent release. I don't think they would get picked up. Yeah. Um, another song that I think is like, a, a, I mean, I don't know how you cannot say this is a summer song, is Saturday in the Park, Chicago. You know? Ugh. Really? How can you? We make, I don't like that band. They're dumb. They're, they're not dumb. They're, they're, they're great. They're a dumb band. You're the inspiration. No, shut up. No, you're not the inspiration. Different incarnation. But, but this That's version... That. Was off of their fifth album, inspired. Uh, Robert Lamb is hanging out in Central Park, and he's just watching people chill. And it's a great uh, uh, horn arrangement at the end, and it, it really, it really is like a nice. Sum I love. It. I've seen Chicago a million times. I always look forward to this number, and it, it just really is like again, a it's great, cool. great. Like you know, you you can feel the sunshine. You can see yourself sitting in a park. You can almost smell the grass when you're listening to it. But what if it's a Wednesday? I can go to the park and Wednesday on the summertime. And it doesn't make a song. It, it doesn't make a difference. It, it, see, it's Saturday. Saturday is just a metaphor for a day. Oh, and Ooh, really summertime is just one long Saturday. That is that, that, wow. See, a, Anthony's with the smoke more week. That way you can be on our <laughs> level. He gets it. He gets it. He, he uh, does. I'm going to go with an old song. And I, again, I'm going with the original. But the cover is just as good. And the cover also reminds me a lot of Summer too. I'm going with Dancing in the Street by Martha and the, and the Vandellas. Great song. Uh, good classic. One. And I'm not, I, I love, absolutely love the old uh, 50s and 60s Motown kind of vibe. I grew up listening to that kind of stuff. It always, uh, th this one always stands out, even for me, as kind of like the, uh, the, the benchmark for that kind of music, too. I think that and My Girl by the Temptations are the two songs that I always went to be eight. Like the most oh, yeah. vibe with, but I love the Bowie and Jagger version too. You I, love that version? I think it's pretty good. Yeah, it's a good. I think it falls under the guilty pleasure category. Like I like a lot of people like like it, but they don't want to admit it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's Bowie Jagger. The video is beyond cheese. Oh, it's the, horrible. The, the dancing it. is like a, I, I couldn't look at anybody. The dancing <laughs> is. It, you know what? You know what? Adam, Adam, and. Uh, Anthony, you'll appreciate this. It is Billy Squire-esque. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, Big time. The, okay. Yeah, the yeah. Dance. <laughs> yes. Watch Jagged Dancing in Dancing in the Street video. Uh, and Bowie, just the over the top and the ham. Oh, God. But Mick I, Jagger always dances like that, doesn't he? But, that's but, his whole oh, thing. but over, it's, 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 no, it's, see, that's cool when he's doing started up. Why is it that you look like Harvey Weinstein doing this? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I wouldn't go that far. Not what I was going for. <laughs> Yeah, no, um... but somehow, somehow it, it came off like that. But no, it, it's, it's such, it's such a bad video. The song is undeniably great, though. You know, it's the worst part of bad. Like they're so happy in that video, and you knew before they started rolling, they were definitely blowing each other in, in the first <laughs> room too. Like that's why they were so happy in that video. Like they both just got off from sucking each other off. That 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 is a, a huge rumor that I had heard a million times. That, that's what rock stars do, and it was, and that rumor was set by um, I think it was jagger's uh girlfriend wasn't it that patty I, f I forgot her name patty the arbuckle or something she i know she, i know you're talking about i can't pronounce pa it. patty de barris parry de ba uh pamela de barris yeah she was yeah. uh she was the star fucker wasn't she yes yeah she was she was married to michael de barris um who was actually lead singer of power station after rob uh palma um you know, we, too much shit about shit I I know stuff about things that I, I shouldn't know, but yeah. but yes yeah yes she's the one that kind of like yeah. Uh, okay, and go ahead. All right, I, it's time for me to give you guys something to to bitch about. So okay, uh, here we go. I'm here we go. Please, 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 please be the, please be the band that we were talking about. Classic summer song. I'm going soak in the sun. Cheryl Crow. It's a no. great song. Another one on my list. I had that on my list. I it's it's great. It's I, an amazing song. I liked that era of like people were starting to get upset at her when she started doing stuff like that. I I was into it. I did too, man. Super I, pop. I, it's real I, slick sounding. I just played that a couple of weeks ago. I was out in Long Island. I was blasting that song. I was like, wow, this is a really great song. I had, yeah. I was on a Cheryl Crow kick that day. I played like I was going through like her greatest hits, and I was like, ah, it's the yeah. Depressing. Every Boom. section is a hook in that song. Oh yeah. I don't, what's the verse? What's the chorus? It's all choruses. That's you got like three different choruses in that song. That is a good point. Is that is that like a first hit? No, no. That was after a few years. What was that the was first? Like hit? very late nineties. Um, all I want to do. All I want to do. All I want to do. That's it. Yeah. Uh, in Las Vegas. Had... Was it Leaving Las Vegas? That's a good one. She has a song happy. called "Good Is Good," which I think is great. The great slide guitar on that. Mm. She plays yeah. accordion too. Yeah, well, I, I like a good accordion song. You know, she's good. She's, yes, she's good. like her, her and Mom's Mabley. I mean, a, a two of my <laughs> my favorite. Mini Pearl. You know, yeah, I, I love a good good accordion. She uh, she plays accordion on uh, one of the songs on Scott Weiland's uh, solo album. 12 bar blues you ever hear that album yes it's an ethan record yeah Decent. It it's good. a great album she plays have, uh accordion on one of the songs have you ever heard scott wyland do uh winter wonderland and watch the video Ugh. oh my i've heard God. some of the christmas stuff you gotta you gotta watch it, it you can't even believe it's him he yeah. had a he had a song called mockingbird girl great song Great, great. I forgot. I forgot. Did he do it solo, or is that the other band that he was? Uh... It was both. I think first it was. Uh, was that band called the Magnificent Bastards? That's right. Yeah. Man. And then it was on Twelve Bar Blues. It was a, a different recording. That's a that great. Song. That's another great summer song too. You want to know something? He's one of those guys that when he passed away, I was actually angry. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It was a lot. Because of... you, you saw it coming, and you didn't want that to happen. Like I saw it coming, yeah. even from the Twelve Bar Blues. Uh, like I saw him on that tour, uh, and I when I remember seeing him, and I was like, he I, he probably is going to die soon. This is probably yeah. one of the last. I remember chances. that. I remember too when I saw and, him. He got back together too. I was like, yeah. I don't know how this guy's even alive at this point. He was so good, man. He was so right. perfect with uh, STP. Even, and, even Velvet Revolver was was a killer. Even though, right, right. Amy Winehouse was another one. Like you saw it coming, and you—I remember where I was when I found out. It just—I mean, I, I was sad, but I just was more mad because it's so senseless. You didn't want to see that happen. Yeah, true. There's so many people I can think of. I'd rather have die of a heroin overdose. You know, <laughs> like who? Um, Tommy Gooch. No, oh man! Only kidding. I love Tommy. Uh, yeah. 
I do. No, I don't know. Um, it depends on Anthony's next pick, actually. <laughs> that was, oh. uh, I got to tell you, uh, I'm, I'm a little annoyed, Jeff. I'm a little annoyed. Yeah, well, listen, we, we still got we still got a couple of minutes left in this, so I, I don't think Anthony's going to disappoint. I I'll, hope. I'll pick, but but I got a song because this again brings good summer memories for me. Yeah, Rock Lobster by the B52s. Great. You know, oh man, as I am Jeff. Yeah, great and, song. Oh, yeah, great oh, album. Great, I have, great I have album. Vinyl. Private Idaho. It's the same album as Private Idaho. Mm-hmm. You know, and even the lyric. You know, we were at a beach. I think party. Private Idaho is on the the one with the red cover. No, it's on the first album. That uh, I think I think fifty two girls, fifty two girls is yeah yeah. I mean, Idaho I think is the the red the red one. What's that one called? Wild Planet or something? You know I don't know. I mean listen, it's been so long. I think mean, this was like in the seventies too. This was at the end of the seventies. Great, great great song. But I remember going to um, an amusement park in Virginia. We used to go we used to go all the time like the. Uh, Water Country USA, saying there was a uh, amusement park over there too. And I took my son, my niece, my nephew, my wife. We had we had a great time, and they would have be free concerts, and B fifty twos are playing. Yeah, they and... were a, they were a band for those kind of things. Like I saw Samantha Fox at one of those amusement parks. Samantha Fox. Yeah, yeah. So, no, what, at a kids thing. Yeah, like uh, for families. It was like a great adventure kind of thing. Yeah. Hmm. Do you remember who Samantha Fox is, Anthony? No. Google, Adam, Google you got, Adam, please, if you can get us a picture of Samantha Fox, please Jeff, put Jeff that up. I lost millions of potential children. Oh my God, Fox. she was uh, she was unbelievable. She was supposedly like a semi porn star. Oh you yeah, know? She but she, nothing supposed about it. Yeah, I mean her videos were sexual. She was so hot. Oh my God, she was, she was, a she was like one of those. Yeah, she was one of you those would essential like every dude had her poster in their room mm. kind of that'd be like bringing a bunch of seven-year-olds to see gino Pisconti, you know it's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's like i don't know if you'd if, if you'd be a booking uh, samantha fox at, at an amusement park <laughs> but b52s they played to the crowd the so kids good. are dancing you know rock lobsters is kind of like a fun song you know there's little type of noises you know the naming different fish going by oh yeah great you know, oh man love that song i love that band uh, yeah, I uh, I I never saw them live, but I I saw I I this is like over twenty years ago now. It was a Halloween show. I was uh, at a Foo Fighters concert, and for the encore, they brought out Fred Schneider and they did Planet Claire. Oh wow! Yeah, I, was aren't they, now isn't awesome. Rock Lobster and Planet Claire on the same album? Same album, yeah. Then Private Idaho is on that album. It's not first, first time I heard that song. Not... I was doing one of those walk. Sure it is. You remember how those walkathons when you were in high school, like people had to pledge you and yes, you know, mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do one. So I I had left my uh, Walkman at home, and this kid uh, I was friendly with, and he was like, "Well, we can share. Like, you know, I'll play a song, then you play a song, and like, I'm, of course, I'm playing like Metallica and Justice for All and shit like that." And he goes, "No, nice. listen to this," uh, and it was Rock Lobster for the first time, and I'm listening to it going. This is a very strange song. Like I was probably 14 and I didn't realize until like three years later, that kid was gay as a $3 bill. Let me tell oh, you. Okay. Anthony, you see what's up on the screen? Oh yeah. Okay. I don't know her. That's Samantha Fox. And that's not even a great picture of her. There, yeah. there was a picture. Yeah. There was a picture of her where she was just like, she, oh, man. she could just, it's not, like a bad, a, it's not a bad picture. No, of her. no. <laughs> <laughs> but but there, I just remember there was a picture. She was just maybe wearing like a t-shirt and like Daisy Dukes, like and she would just be squatting. You're like, holy yeah. shit! Yeah, she was amazing. Thank you, Adam. See, Adam's the best. <laughs> yeah. That's the happiest I think I've ever heard you. You know what? I, Thank I you, Adam. Thank you so much. No, I much haven't. For that. I haven't thought of Samantha Fox in like forever. Right. I mean, again, she wasn't like the most talented person by far, but she had that look. She well, that's had... all that Jeff cares about when we're talking about summer songs. Yeah. What about... does she look like? And she's not a four. She's not a Katrina four. She's not a Katrina. Samantha Fox was was like by all means like a ten. New knew she remind me of a little bit. She was like the white version of Lisa Lisa. Remember Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam? Of course, I remember Lisa. It had the song "Head to Toe," which was a, also another great song. Um, but she she was built like kind of like the same way, you know, short, about maybe 
five foot, you know, uh, definitely D's. I mean, she, they were just, yeah, that was just such a cool look. That's so 80s. That was so 80s. I got a cheesy one. Oh, who's next? Who's next? Don't make a difference. Good, good. I just saw one that popped into my brain. uh, And man, if you like this song, this is horrific. It's absolutely horrific. Uh, Summer Girls by LFO. Oh, I know. Uh, Oh, oh. just because of the line, I like girls that wear Abercrombie and Fitch Chinese food makes me sick. That's that's poetic. It doesn't even rhyme. It it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be rhyming. Also, Chinese food is delicious. It is. Is it? But okay, here's something about LFO. They're all dead. They're all dead. Yeah. Yeah. Very I sad. Really... I hated their music. I, I'm sad that they're all dead. <laughs> I'm, I'm sad they're all, all, dead. all dead. Yeah, but they, they died like in like by like the weirdest ways. They wound up getting like these these diseases that like most people just don't get. Right? You heard that story about LFO? Yeah. yeah, I think a couple of them got cancer. Right? Was it cancer? I, but it was like a very rare cancer, and they got it very young too. They were very young. They've been dead for a long time. They, right. The first one died like. I want to say it was almost 20 years ago when the first one died. I, I think you're right. I think like went out and tried to keep the LFO uh, banner still oh, alive. I think I think he one of them just died recently. Like when I say recently, within the last four or five Which years. Which one I was trying to save it was L F or O. Do you know that? Was LFO supposed to be the initials of, of the who they are? I don't know. Were they the precursor for L M F A O? I actually like them, dude. I gotta tell you, they had some <laughs> great, some great fun songs, man. What was that song? Uh, uh, Party Rock was a big song. They oh, actually so do the uh, the theme song to Jersey Shore. Oh wow! There's a theme song to that shit show for the in- for the uh, for the credits. Yeah, get crazy, get loud. You've heard that? Oh, that was them. I've wow. never, never heard that. Oh yeah, yeah. That's <sighs> terrible. Even some might say worse than LFO. Or even worse than the show. The show. <laughs> I mean, Man, I that's, uh, but it is entertaining. It was bad, but it was entertaining. Yeah. You, can, can you still get into that right now? I have They're in their 40s. They have, watch it, they have I watch gray it. hair. I watch it all the time. Hey, what's wrong with gray hair? Come on. But you, you're not you're not you're not going to run around, you know, saying, you know, are we gonna smash, you know, uh Jim oh, Tan? No, Come on. Dude, it's all are they still drama now, man? Wait, they're them. still doing the show? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. They got yeah, back it, together. It's huge. They got back together. It's like the Beatles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they I mean, you know, they had a good run. They did a few seasons, whatever uh, it was, four no, or five no, seasons. Yeah. I always wonder like who who the Neanderthals that, that watch that show. Oh, right here. And, yeah, I'm looking at one oh, right in front of me. I'm actually friends with uh just so you know, I'm personal friends with uh you know, Vinny's uncle Uncle Nino. No, get out of here, really? Wow! Is holy that, shit! I, mean, I went to junior Uncle high Nino with, was uh, he that with, talk with about him. a Z-less celebrity. Oh, he's great, ah. he's a great guy. He lives right in Staten Island. Yeah, I, I know, I know. <laughs> do, you, do you remember? There was a, a big Ange used to have a place called the Drunken Monkey on Staten oh, Island. Shit, I miss and, so many times, dude. And they and they used to do comedy. I remember doing comedy yeah. there. Oh yeah, I did too. And I was there, I think, with Sue Golden and Jeff Norris one night, and. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and um, Uncle Nino comes in, you know, Ange came in, and people went there more to gawk at, yeah. like, these Z-listers than to see the show. Oh, I agree with that. I agree with that. But let me tell you, man, the show is banger this year. Because Sammy came back on the show, like, after all those years. Yeah, Sammy came back. Well, she's she's after very all talented. This time. She is very talented. She's she, good. She's, she's good. Girl, when like when she gives those blank looks and has no reaction... Okay, I mean, this is a girl who you have to have a mask to get some type of emotion out of. Are you friends with her? <laughs> that was brought up a lot. That That's was a good impression. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually a fun. Now, the dynamic's very different because you started off the gym tan laundry and being guidos and stuff like that, and now it's a whole balance of family life and with the mm. intercast drama with Angelina. Oh, I she- went to high school with Angelina Pavonic's father. Did you really? <laughs> yes. I went to the same junior high school as uh, uh, Vinny. Vinny? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. He was like a great. Well, you I mean, were on Staten did... Island for a little bit. Yeah. Well, it wasn't really a junior high. It was, but it was. Uh, it I was. was a... I was there for junior high. It was year. a GED school. It was. Well, I think the school was like kindergarten to eighth grade, but I I came much later. 
Was it but, a Catholic uh, school? Yeah, St. Rita's. Yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. Very, very famous school. In I didn't know him. He was, I think, a grade behind me. But uh, I think our, my mom and his mom, I think, used to wait wait for us. They They might have chatted, our moms. I'm not a fan of the Catholic. You were that close to being on Jersey Shore, Anthony. Oh. I, it could, you know, I could have been a contender. Just picture Anthony on Jersey Shore. Like, they're, they're all like Guido's there. Anthony, Anthony's, Anthony's over there. Like, like who's who's that weird guy in the corner? <laughs> just, a, just, just drumming his guitar, you know, listening to... <laughs> Uh, listening to to wet legs, modest yeah. mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I like both of those artists. Of course, <laughs> of course you do. Okay, I, uh, I got Catholics. I got another song if, for you guys. Can I just ask you one thing, Jeff? Have you ever been a, a confirmation sponsor? N- no. Uh, so my cousin asked me to be his confirmation sponsor, which is a very and I've only been a best man at a wedding once. Yeah, me too. And, and I totally blew it. blew it. Yeah, mine ended in. A I gave the worst speech. I, 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 I can understand why you're not very good with a microphone. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I went, I was like, I don't know how, what it takes to become a sponsor. So apparently um, I have to join a church, which I did. And as I filled out the paperwork, she handed me a stack of envelopes as a, as a wink, wink with my church member number on them. Okay. Number one. Now, uh, 17 years. What's the wink, wink? because they give me envelopes to give them money all the time, or else they're not going to sign my fucking paperwork in order to become this kid's sponsor. Right. That's how they do it. Now you want to hear something great. I have to be interviewed by a priest. A priest is going to interview me to see if I, if I'm deemed sponsor worthy. How big would you check? I haven't written one yet. It's July 1st, the interview. So I'm going to see how, how bad the interview goes. I'm going to bring a few extra or a few extra bucks in the, uh, in the fucking wallet. A couple how bucks. much do you think you have to put in? Over time, how many envelopes did they give you? Oh, they gave me a a, sta- a year's worth almost. You they probably gave- have to give at least five hundred dollars. I would imagine. Over the course of a year. Yeah, I would imagine. But man, what a racket! What a is frick- that a write off? Can you? I I can, can you, I could write it off. Yeah, because Lord knows I don't have enough you know comedy to write off. So, um, it's bad. But I, I got a song. What's okay? the song? And yeah. yeah, so it's. It's kind of a dark summer song. Of course it is, man. Man, okay. It's uh, Summer in the City by The Love and Spoonful. That's a great written, one. Yeah. Written by, by great uh, John Sebastian. And unlike Saturday in the Park, this really paints a picture of gritty New York. And, you know, like the noises you hear at nighttime. And in the song itself, you hear um, car horns. You hear jackhammers going. So it really makes you kind of feel like, you know, summer in new york city it's for me i feel i feel new york city i feel like the east village i feel like you know anywhere between um east fourth street and east 24th street i I, see i I go higher up where you start going to the peep shows and the girls that are like no because you know what that's and shit it's it's like like for comedy like that that's where you would basically have walked at during 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 the summer do you remember that anthony you yeah. go, you know, you go from Eastville to New York Comedy Club and all like the other little places like in between. Remember? Yeah. Oh yeah. And Is then that, you go up, then you go up to Times Square, do all the <laughs> the worst places. You know, Joe, Joe Franklin's. Ugh. LOL. LOL. No, LOL. both places no longer there. Ugh. Yeah. I got a, a one that uh, I think everybody can agree is a cheesy '80s song, but I I also love the band too. I'm going with Vacation by the Go Go's. Great song. Like nothing kinda, wrong with the Go Go's. Kind of like you said, Jeff. This is not a song I can picture listening to when I'm uh, have my snowblower out and I'm trying to clean off two feet of snow in the middle. You don't of listen. Time. You don't listen to that in the in you the winter listen, time. You know, you don't listen to it. this. Is that's, that's when you break out in May. Yeah, maybe May. I think I think uh, end of June, early July. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It only has a it only has a shelf life for about seven weeks a year, basically. But it's still a great song. It is. It's also another one of these videos where. The, they're, they're not really water skiing. They're mm-hmm. on a green screen. I like complete. Mm-hmm. I like 100% reality. I like. Does that open. ruin it for you? It takes me out immediately. Now, uh, I'm Jane okay Wheatland, is she a five? Jeffrey, on your scale? Who's that? Jane Wheatland from the, the Go Go's. Oh, God. Man, I've gone up and down with her for years. Um, I remember see Anthony, do you remember a band called Sparks? Spark? Yeah, yeah. The, okay. They're a duo. Right. So I remember yeah, seeing cool. them and they had a song with Jane Whelan called Cool Places. And they were the opening band for Rick Springfield, another band that Sean likes. Okay. 
So we go see him. She, she, at the, at, during that time, early 80s, uh, with Jane Whelan was, was great. But then she, you know, she was in Bill and Ted's and she tries to act like overly cute and, and like, you know, adorable. And that, that just kind of ruins it for me. Wow. A lot of things ruin it for you. Yeah. She's no Belinda Carlisle. <laughs> what, what, what does she fall under the, uh, the Jeffrey Paul scale of hotness? Jane Whelan? No, uh, no, uh, Belinda Carlisle. Jane Whelan is a six. Belinda Carlisle is probably, probably an eight. Really? All right. Yeah. Hopefully, we can get her on the show. And can... especially, especially when she had, <laughs> especially when she had the long hair. Well, definitely the longer hair version. I would have to agree with that. Yeah, I don't like. I don't. I don't like short hair. It, it, you look too much like a guy. <laughs> I, I like. I like long. Hair. What's the matter, Anthony? You you don't like long hair. I like long hair. I like long hair. I like short hair. I don't like short hair. Depends. No. no. You know, everybody's got their own style. I wouldn't have survived in the twenties. I I didn't like the flapper haircut. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta change it up. Jeffrey, you did, and look at you now. No, no. But like, what about you? You ever grow your hair out, Jeff? Me? Yeah. If I if you saw my my high school yearbook picture, it's longer than yours. Yeah. So yeah. You, you like to mix it up. Sometimes it's long, sometimes it's short. Well, now I don't have the ability to grow it like that anymore. I never yeah. had long hair, but my friend used to bust my balls because I would always be like, oh, my God, my hair is so long. And it was like down to the middle of my ear. <laughs> like I would try yeah. to be that asshole who would try to put it into a ponytail and it would get like half of an inch it's, long hair. Uh, it was horrible. Just a little yeah, up in the back. You probably oh. look like you in like crouching tiger or hidden dragon. No, I look like I look like a fat Chris Farley with, with really <laughs> stupid hair. It was Hong Kong. <laughs> Hong Kong fooey. <laughs> like, actually <laughs> let me think of another one i got i got a dark uh i got a dark summer song yeah because yeah, we got it we got to wrap this up in the next couple of minutes and oh. yet and i'm and I, i'm gonna say the band if you don't say it yeah I, it probably won't be this this one um dark summer song i'm going public enemy fight the power it's a great song but i don't see it as a summer I, song I, I see it. 1989 yeah. the number sound of, uh another summer sound, sound of the, of the funky, funky drummer, drummer. And it was summer on, right, right in there, and it's it's the the opening for "Do the Right Thing," which is a well, movie about the hottest day of the summer. Right, come on, come on, Jeffrey. How does that rate on a on your movie scale, Jeff? Like, what is that? What, what is that? A Spike that Spike Lee joint? Is that like a full? Okay, I think I think Spike Lee is incredibly overrated. I have oh to agree God. with you, you with that too. Wow, man. I think I, 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 I imagine I, I imagine Jeff watching "Do the Right Thing," rooting for the pizza guys. No, I, I, there, 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 are, there are two directors I think that people like to to watch and just just because they like they think it makes them smart. But I, I don't think I think they're very overrated. I think uh, Woody Allen is one of those guys. Okay. Okay, and I think Spike Lee is the other one. I thought you were no. going to say Tarantino. I yeah, love I Tarantino. Thought he was too. No, I was. In fact, I was just defending Tarantino today. People were uh, were beating up on him. Like, I, I, how do you how do you have the nerve? <laughs> to, 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 you know, to you, you're bashing Pulp Fiction. Can I don't you know how that? you don't like uh, uh, Spike Lee and you do like uh, Quentin Tarantino. I feel oh. like the the movies are very similar vibes. I don't think they're similar. I think I think it has to do with the storytelling. Not really not, the same not, messages. Not, not the way they're, similar... they're filmed. Now listen, there, mm-hmm. there's like okay, it's like Woody Allen. I like Annie Hall. Everything Annie else, Hall's classic. Okay, but I think everything else is like you know overrated bullshit and i think people just want to be they want to be smart and say i really like this man you know you don't get it man when he came off the screen uh do you know what that fuck you it's it's not good it's it's, he's no scorsese he's no marty it's it's not (laughs) yeah um anthony please pick one because I, i i gotta name this band uh, let's see. Let me look at what I had. I don't think I'm going to pick the band that you were, uh, hoping I would pick. Um, all right. You know what? This is another song by a band I don't even really yeah, like, but I feel like, look at this yeah, yeah, it's phone just, during a podcast. Wow, I mean, okay. talk, I mean, this is what <laughs> I fucking deal with. Anthony, I need you back. <laughs> I need you. This, this was, this wasn't a guess. This was a hidden audition. <laughs> I can't believe the answer to yeah, it, it, it answers the phone. I'm getting phone calls. Yeah, I'm I'm 
I'm yeah. putting him on mute. I'm sending him a message. Okay, this guy picks up the phone. No, Unbelievable. Is, and and, and doesn't have himself. the courtesy to go off, to go off camera. He didn't even mute his microphone. Oh, I, no. <laughs> not a word. Not a word. Wow. Does this happen like all the time? Is this a regular thing? This is the first time he's he's no. done it. So it makes me think this new weed that he's smoking has to be, you know. <laughs> So, you yeah, okay, yeah, we're going to be quiet because you're like, go to another room, <laughs> stupid. You you edit this stuff out or you keep? Oh, you think you'll keep this in? Yeah, okay, now he finally muted it. As he, as he gets off the phone, now he's going to mute it. <laughs> My what microphone was muted. <laughs> you weren't muted. We were listening to you. Are you really? Yeah, you're so dumb. <laughs> take, you take, are... another, uh, take another <laughs> puff. <laughs> right, actually, okay. That's right. <laughs> puff oh, fatty. I had to take, I had oh. to take it. That's better than any song you were gonna make fun of me about. What? Who? Who was the? Who was the artist? Oh, yeah. okay. So, so, Anth huh? so, so, uh, Adam said he remembers you brought this up on a show that we probably did over a year ago. He goes, Anthony's absolutely gonna bring them up. It was Cheek Face. Oh, I love Cheek Face. <laughs> of course you love Cheek. I, I, that and Wet Leg. Are still yeah. two bands I cannot get over. I like Wet Leg too. Of course you do. I you liked know. Wet Leg right before everybody liked Wet Leg. I was actually a little annoyed that everybody thought they were cool for liking Wet Leg at a certain point. Do you ever do you know a band called The Beaches? Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, blame it on my ex. Blame it on Brett. Uh, great, great song. Maybe, yeah. They're, they're, they're really good. See, I, that's they're the beaches or are they beaches? The beaches. They're, they're just called beaches. Okay. Yeah. Blame, well, yeah. When you get to a Blame certain act. Age, you start always, always go, you know, I have to go on the computer. You know what I mean? <laughs> I want to go to the, you know, to the beaches. Yeah. The be yeah, all of the beaches. <laughs> I like I like the I I don't like just just no no the in front of it. You can't just be strokes. You got to be the strokes. That's true. The it's struts, not just you struts. Could, you could be different strokes. <laughs> different Maybe. struts. That's actually the name of the new Keith Robinson special that just came out. I heard I heard it's very very good too. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. What, what yeah. a show with him, man. What what a what is, brilliant, brilliant talent, man. What is it on? Netflix. Nice. Yeah, nice. just, released, just released it. This week, but um, Anthony, man, this was so much fun having you on here. Yeah, I had a great time. This this was so cool. What? T so tell us where people could uh, uh, find you. What what what's going on? You know, just uh, give me information. Yeah, all my social media is at Anthony Kapfer, K A P F E R, uh, and you can see what I'm up to. I'm just I'm I'm hanging out. I'm I'm working on music and and stuff mostly. Uh, but yeah, that's, you know, try, try not to leave my apartment if I don't have to. Smart. Well, smart. well listen, man, we, we miss you here in New York. You know, it's the, the comedy scene is very, very different than it was like, you know, when Dustin had, yeah, when yeah, Dustin had like, Greenwich. if I went back, I don't even, I wouldn't recognize the city. The city has forgotten me at this point. I, I, it's been a while since I've been back. How long are you, how long are you out in New York? I have not been in new york since 2019. wow that long yeah yeah crazy. I, it just seems like yes i remember like the one thing you wouldn't want to do is follow this guy at greenwich you know because <laughs> because no greenwich was a small room you yeah. get up there with those songs you know on the guitar and you would just murder it was like may, maybe like tj you know mm -hmm. would be good to go after you or mike Britt. Oh yeah, he could because he could follow anybody. Right, but I mean, like you you put somebody else on. I mean, it, it was like, oh, I don't want to follow this guy. You know, I always <laughs> I would, I, would, I would be like, you know, let, let me just go and be for him. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it, I, they, it'd be I used better to for be, the show. <laughs> I think I think uh, yeah. I, as I was at Greenwich longer and longer, I was I, I kept getting closer to the end of the show to kind of yeah. like. Yeah, you did. That's, Breathe that's... some new life into it before the headliner. Maybe, maybe right after the check spot, you know, people are angry, and then I come on and. <laughs> or if there's someone who's ready like for the headliner. A little weaker, they just didn't connect with the crowd. You know, Anthony, get up there, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and start mm -hmm. doing it. it was, you know, I mean, it was, it was just great. But again, man, great having you on. 
Thanks yeah. for um, having me. Also, good, folks, good still time you. to get tickets for Sean's uh, uh, comedy taping. Yeah, you know, if so Adam will get these shows out uh, on a timely basis, um, maybe we'll have this out before uh, at the end of August, and people can, <laughs> can buy tickets over at Tiff's. Tiff's, Tiff's, uh, Tiff'sComedy.com. August 24th, Donna V, my best friend, is hosting. My second best friend, Jeffrey Paul, is going to be uh, going on right before me. And then uh, I, I ran the hour this weekend, and uh, I uh, 85%, I'm saying. Eighty-five percent. So uh, yeah, it's it's almost half sold out too, from what I'm being told. Two months ahead of time, which I think is great. So it it's definitely it, sell out, but let's put it'll it on. sell out. But people go go uh, get those tickets for that. Come, come see us, and uh, you can always follow me at you know at, at my social Jeffrey Paul Comic. All right, guys, thank you so much, Anthony. Pleasure, man. It was so it was so great seeing you again. It was so, yeah, great great hanging with. It was you a guys. great episode. You actually disappointed me. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe no cheek face, no nothing weird, no weird band like you know, you know, yeah, you know, I like this band, you know, they're, they're, they're called the Edgar Allan Poe's. And... <laughs> the, thing, like the worst part, his list was better than both of ours. He had a great list. He really did. Bastard. I'm right. sorry to disappoint with my. You know what? Have me back on. I'll make a bad list. Oh, uh, we'll we'll have you. <laughs> oh, back that's on. Like, that's definitely gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Catch you later. Keep following. Subscribe. Take care, everyone.